Hi, this is a quick overview of flat irons by Extreme Geo. The um, when you first build a database, which I've just done from a SegWi file, I've extracted the geometry from the headers, and um, because of this is a quick overview, I'm not going to go through that part. We actually have a video on our website xtgeo.com that shows you how to do that. Um, <clears throat> The first thing you see is this uh, modern multi-map display, and uh, we'll come back to this. Right now, since we have nothing in our database of interest, no delay times or statics or anything, um, this is not a very interesting display, but later it will be. The, um, in the program, we have um, several databases. We have a receiver uh, SQL database. We have a shot SQL database. And we also have a trace SQL database. <clears throat> as we add parameters to the, as we compute the late times and statics, we will add uh, parameters or, or columns to uh, these databases. Right now, as you can see, we have line number and point number up here on the, up on the left. We have easting and northing and elevations. And we also have an initial easting and northing. And as we compute the um, new values for the geometry, there's a few shots out of position, for example, in this particular database. We can we use the initial we compare it to the uh, current or the easting and northing uh, to determine the distance um, and the um, direction of the new shot location compared to the old. The uh, we have a pick window, of course. This is a refraction statics program, and um, we have a map view over here. And these are 3D data set. I'm going to show you. We have uh, grouping off here. I'm going to turn, I mean grouping on. I'm going to turn the grouping off. So now you can see that we have six receiver lines for each shot. Uh, we can look in the, in the receiver plane. I'm going to bring up another pick window. And we'll look at this one in the receiver plane. And I'll click a few places. Again, turn the grouping off. And so you can see we have multiple more um, shot lines per receiver. So you can see here, for example, um, here's my receiver location. And as I move through the traces here, you can see the vector showing the location of each of the shots associated with this particular receiver in our database. Um, since this is an overview, I'm not going to go into all the functions of the program. But one of the more important ones is the ability to apply a series of processes. The, uh, to do this, we have a funnel. And the funnel is a, um, it's supposed to represent a flow of processes. And over here, we can add processes to this. So for example, if I wish, I could apply a bandpass filter. And if, if you watch the traces when I do this, you'll see that my filter is, has been applied. And I can toggle that filter off and on. I can also change the length of the filter. Um, I can change the bandwidth, of course, those kinds of things. Um, I can also apply a AGC. As you can see, it's a bit harsh at this point, so I can crank it back a little bit, changing the window size. Now, one of the things we want to do in a, in a, when we're doing refraction stacks, of course, is apply linear move out. So to apply linear move out, we can do it like this. We apply linear move out, go to move out, apply linear move out, and the default is 2,000. The, in this particular data, the velocity is closer to 6,000 or so. We actually have several refractors in here, uh, but the average is about 6,000. And now I'm going to change my window size to be, the um, window length to be minus 300 to 300, which is the default. Let me make this 100 to 300. Now the other thing on these data, I prefer to pick the trough. So I'm going to change the display to show you troughs. And fill the trough and not the positive. So I'm going to turn off the positive, fill the negative, and I'm going to change the color of the negative to be like so. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, I've done a pretty good job flattening this out. But uh, as you can see, I also have complex move out. So to deal with this, one of the really uh, powerful additions to our software to Flatirons is the LMO is the, the ability to define the LMO trend using traces. Under picking, defined LMO trend using traces. Uh, these pink um, dots just 
represent CMP gather locations that have been pre-allocated. I'm going to turn those off because this is a fairly small data set and I like to do this LMO trend right at the intersections between shot and receiver lines because I like to see the traces all the way back to zero offset. So for example here you can see that I'm missing my, my first thousand feet of traces. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn off the pre-computed and I'm going to click here right at the intersections and you can see now I have having traces coming all the way back to zero. And again I'm going to be picking the trough so to help me uh, visualize the trough again I'm going to turn off the positives and fill the negatives and I'm going to pick right down this trough and double click to, whoops I have to make sure I do this increasing in time with distance there we go and I can apply linear move out to this also to help me out to do a little bit more resolution and I'll change the axis over here and I'll change this to 400 or so and you can see it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was at, at, at the um, without the linear move out one of the reasons why you want to zoom in on this with linear move out and with the window length there we go and I'll do another one over here So what I'm doing is I'm actually specifying a spatially variable complex linear move out. And as I do this, the program starts to interpolate the field for me. So if I click here, you can see the program is, it has interpolated it and it's, it's pretty good. Um, I probably didn't even have to re-specify that one. Let's look up here. Looks good looks good except for the inner offsets. Let me get those inner offsets here. And that looks good. Looks good enough. Okay, so I'm going to apply changes down here in the lower left. And now instead of applying linear move out over here, I'm going to apply, I'm going to turn off the linear move out and I'm going to say I want to apply LMO trend, or the word to move out trend. Okay, so now I'll bounce around and you can see that here's my zero time so let me let me zoom in a little bit differently here let me center on zero and you can see the event that I'm trying to pick here is pretty close to zero so I can take advantage of this and say over here I'm going to I'm going to add another thing for picking and I'm going to say I want to do the pick event closest to zero and I want to pick a trough instead of a peak and a few missed picks here and there, but those are just at the inner offsets. So you can see it's done a pretty good job. Even here, where it's jumped off to this event, it's actually found this event, which is the, one of the inner offset events. So um, I can't really argue with that. Here it's pretty complex, but as again, you can see that it's done a pretty good job um, picking this shallower event, and it's ignored this because I defined that in my LMO trend. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, well, let's just use this trend and, these, and this particular uh, picking option to pick the whole survey. So what this program is going to do now is, is creating a thing called pick T, and pick T is a temporary, is a, it's a type of um, predicted pick, so to speak. And, but the program uh, only uses what we call user picks. So I want to... Um, so it must be copied to user picks, and since I don't have any user picks to override, um, I'm going to tell it to um, just copy those into the user picks. So it gives me this dialog. It says copy pick T to user and say yes, that looks fine. And it's okay to overwrite what's over there because I don't have anything, so I can close. Now if I did have some picks in there, that I, let's say I've been picking a big 3D and I'd been picking for a week, I would tell it to, I would actually back up my other picks. So I could actually create a, another type of picks called Chuck or something because my name is Chuck or backup or whatever and copy the user picks that I already have into that to prevent myself from losing all my work. Um, so now I have a bunch of picks and I'm going to go right into the branch assignment dialog. And the branch assignment dialog is to specify refractors for analysis because we're going to jump right into analysis with this, with these picks. So I'm going to apply a linear move out and 
you can see here I have pretty much three refractors one two and three so here's one here's two and here's three for the purpose of this program I'm just going to use refractor two okay so I'm going to apply changes it's going to interpolate those I don't want to kill any picks and I'm going to do a sequence a standard analysis so as you can see the program's pulling me through a sequence of steps here now if I want I, I can see how well I did I can do apply my defaults and under here the delay time analysis what this does is it limits my shots um, displays to the refractor assignment the the offset range which was roughly about 2,000 to 4,000 up here you can see in my offset display up top and now we can look around the, the survey and a perfect solution is flat on zero so as you can see most of the time is flat on zero a uh, few aberrations here and there um, one place here where I probably could have picked a little bit better um, but what I can now display is I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my delay time error so over here I'm gonna reload my plot reload my database and I'm going to go to delay time error and I'm going to turn off the colors associated with the low error and I'm going to get rid of all these other vectors and things here. So this shot here um, had a problem with the picking. And as you can see, it, it did so because it had problems with, um, it turns out that there's a geometry problem associated with this particular shot. The shot's out of position, in other words. And the vectors up here in the upper left show where the vector, where the shot should be located. So I'm going to say move to the current location. And now I'm going to uh, repick it. And now I'll go to another shot now as you can see these vectors here um, right now are are um, somewhat centered but on the other hand I have a lot of mispicks so as I repick this to be better picked you can see the vectors now all say that I belong I have a red vector um, this is where the shot is and it says I believe I belong down here by 200 feet or about what about um, 30 meter uh, 50 meters or so so I'm going to move to the current location, and there's a mispick there, clean him up, and now there's some other shots that have shown up. Now, it gets a little complicated depending on how the shot is moved, but if I, re, if we, if I remove, um, if I reorder these things as mutually here, under trace, I can reorder these traces by trace azimuth, and now I'm seeing that they order, when I have a geometry problem, the organization is much simpler in the azimuth plane or the directional plane because what I'm doing now is I'm looking if you look at the vector on the left here I'm actually spinning around in direction um, with as I move along these traces and now this vector here um, it doesn't change uh, it doesn't it's irrelevant what order I have my traces in but now I'm going to move it to the current location and I'll um, that we get another one so I can I can there's about um, 20 shots I look miss uh, miss uh, located in here I'm not going to go through them all I'll just go through a few more here and show you real quickly and move I'll do one more say this guy here now oh, this one I just pick let me do one more here so you can see uh, since we're actually looking at the um, traces themselves where our confidence in the fact that we're moving these shots to a different location is, is much higher than if we were just looking at picks. Okay, so I'm going to uh, forget that for now. I'm going to construct a model and the um, delay time model building window. I'm going to define a weathering velocity of, um, uh, let's say, 2,000 feet per second. finish and now I have a if I look in my uh, profile display window here I can look in any direction I've actually constructed a refractor model so I'm going to stop this and this will be part one of the overview